Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is straight out of Boston, or aka the King of Boston, and today we're back with episode 15 of the Reggie Bush Road to Glory. And uh, today it's going to be the first day in a long string of Reggie Bush videos every day until we can get this series done, because I want to get this done with. Um, now that we've got the Yankees franchise done, and I uh, want to get this done so we can uh, let the Madden videos, uh, you know, come out more frequently, stuff like that, and as well as keep Manny going at least for a little bit. I uh, don't know how much Manny I'm going to be posting, but uh, I'm definitely going to at least try to keep at it. Anyway, uh, I'll probably have a uh, Manny episode later today. If Yeah, this will probably go up first. So. Anyway, uh, back to what I was saying. What I was going to say is um, in yesterday's Madden video, I did a I did the first episode of the Jeff Samarja um, uh, Connected Career Mode. So there's two things I want to address on that. first one is that... Uh, a fan in the comments section of below. Well, I would not a fan of me. Well, I don't know. Maybe he is a fan of me, <laughs> but a fan of Jeff Samarja did say that um, he would have actually been a first rounder because I had him as the late rounder uh, type of player. But uh, and I was like, mm, the scouting report I read said late rounder, and then he was like, no, 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 no. We went back and forth for a little bit, and uh, I was wrong. Actually, he was right. So um, shout out to that guy. I think it was like S Mard something. Can't really remember, but. Anyway, he said that Jeff Samarja would have been a first rounder if he had not signed a uh, signed the deal that after he got drafted by the Chicago Cubs, and he was right. He had first round talent, according to many many scouts. Um, so uh, there was, that's a slight error in the Samarja connected career mode, but he's like a 79 overall as it is, so it's not too big of a deal, at least not in my opinion. So I uh, just wanted to address that quickly for anyone wondering about that, and I'll uh, touch on it quickly in the next episode of Jeff Samarja connected career mode, which will probably be out tomorrow. And I also want to talk about why I did Jeff Samarja and why I didn't do Tyrone Matthew or Terrell Pryor. Here's why. So, I promised... Well, I didn't promise. I said I was going to do Tyrone Matthew and Terrell Pryor. So, here's what happened with both of them. Tyrone Matthew, you can't change the camera angle this year. It just gives you the, the regular camera as if you were playing, like, a regular game. It doesn't... Like, if you're a halfback, you, you won't have the camera that Reggie has right now. You'll just have the regular default camera. So, when you're a quarterback and you can't see when you're on the field half of the time and you're trying to, like, you know, stay with somebody, it's kind of difficult. So, I was struggling with a, a lot of it. You know, that difficulty is combined with the fact that I'm awful at defensive back in, you know, career mode and, uh, you know, road to glory. Just kind of made it that was like, this isn't really fun. And, uh, you know, I, I put him on the Patriots. So I was like, you know, I was oh, like, man, you know, Tyrant Matthew on the Patriots is going to be awesome. You know, beast mode, you know, Super Bowl championship, wow! But it was like, this this is not fun. So, I think I'm gonna hold off on that until either they address the camera issue, or I think it might just be because the connected career mode. This is like the very early build of the connected career mode for this year's game. So I'm sure they'll address it in future games, if not later in this game. But um, I don't know if they could actually add a camera angle as like a patch or something. But anyway, uh, so for for the time being, I'm gonna uh, hold off on that. And uh, Terrell, Plyer, Terrell Pryor, well, quarterbacks are really boring, not only to watch, but for me to also kind of play. I have one of, I have a quarterback I play on my own where I use my game face for him. It's kind of fun, but I can't play for too long, to be honest. Like, I just, um, it's not very interesting to me, to, to be quite honest. Um, you know, it kind of feels like you're just controlling the, the team as if you were, uh, you know, playing a franchise or whatever. So I don't find it that interesting. And you can see here Reggie Bush, fourth in the Heisman watch. You're going to see the Heisman watch after every game from now on. But um, back to what I was saying. So 12 prior, I decided not to do e either. And then I decided I wanted to switch things up to a wide receiver, something that almost no one, nobody else does. Uh, you rarely see wide receivers out there for, uh, you know, you know, like superstar modes or road to glories, connected careers, anything like that. And, you know, I thought it'd be a cool storyline. Uh, Jeff Samarja, I was, uh, he was, I, I was reading an old, like, sporting news magazine that, uh, the other day, that after I was cleaning out my closet, uh, for a little bit, and, you know, I found it, and I started reading some of the articles. I just flipped through it, and I just read an article on Jeff Samarja, I was like, oh yeah, like, this would be really cool, because Jeff Samarja's a beast, and I actually like him on the Cubs, because he's a beast. But anyway, I thought that would have been a cool idea. And I think the wide receiver gameplay is going to switch it up a lot from the coach. Because uh, I think out of any of the offensive positions, um, other than maybe tight end, wide receiver is really the one where you really feel like you are your own player. And you can't, you know, I mean, quarterback, it kind of feels like you're controlling the entire team. Because you're really the quarterback for most of the time when you are controlling the entire team. And halfback similar to that. You know, wide receiver is like, you, you know, you're not controlling anybody except yourself, really. So it's, I don't know if that made sense to any of you guys, but... 
I'm having a ton of fun with it. It's so much fun. Uh, you know, it's not the most glamorous position, and you wouldn't think you would have fun with it, but it's it's hella fun. I, I, I don't know what it is. It just is hella fun. So uh, that's going to go well with the Coach Connected Career Mode, which if you guys did not see that episode, uh, it's basically with the Tennessee Titans. Um, I'm going to try and take them to the top, probably contend for a playoff spot in the first year possibly, and then see where we go from there. But uh, the first episode was the first two preseason games. The next episode will be the next two preseason games. And uh, yeah, so the schedule outlook is going to kind of be like Reggie Bush every day with uh, you know each Madden series going every other day. And a little Manny thrown in there once in a while. I'm not really sure where I'm going to fit Manny in, but, you know, I'll put him in there once in a while for you guys, because I know a lot of people like that series and they don't want it to they don't want to see it go. But it will always be played in my live streams. Uh, so if you guys check out my live streams, the link to my live streams are in the description of every video I make. Um, you know, you can follow me on there, get email alerts every time I go live. And, uh, you know, I'll always be playing Manny. Even if it's, you know, January and I haven't posted a Manny video in five months or something. Well, not five months, but like, you know, three months. You know, I'll always be playing it, so. Because, you know, Road to the Show is a hella fun mode. I'm saying, like, hella a lot tonight, but, uh. Anyway, so it's kind of what I wanted to address in this commentary quickly. Um. So we're gonna get into, there's does the little, uh, point the, point the finger up or whatever, which is in the, uh, in my YouTube background. In case you guys did not check it out, check it out, because it's cool. Although I'm sure most of you have seen it. But anyway, get to the gameplay here. We, uh, after beating Washington State by only five points, we dropped to number three in the ranking. So we're going up against Cal at home. Um, you know, this time in the Coliseum. So should be able to get the win. We're up 35 to 7, 38 to 17 right now with 345 left in the fourth. So this has been a pretty easy win for us. Um, you, we're just running out the clock now. Reggie Patton on his stats. Um, something, you know, definitely wants to do if he wants to contend for Eisman Trophy. And 251 now, second and four, takes us to the outside, picks up the first down and a little bit more. So nice play by Reggie Bush. We're going to end up winning this game by a final score of 41-17, to as you're going to see right here. 41-17, to good win by USC. And you're going to get another look at where he stands in the Heisman. Watch now, he's second, uh, just behind Pierre Singleton, another halfback out of Georgia. Who I believe a halfback out of Georgia won it in the first year, too, so that's interesting. And Reggie's freshman year. But anyway, we're getting to a game against Oregon State uh, in the Coliseum again. Now we're ranked number two in the country, and Oregon State came to play. They were not intimidated by the crowd. They weren't intimidated by the team. They weren't intimidated by ranking. They weren't intimidated by Reggie, to be quite honest. And uh, they're already up 7 nothing. They came out fighting, and uh, they were relentless, to be honest. But uh, you see Reggie, you know, you know, Oregon State isn't exactly going to be a top-tier defense most years. So fourth and goal here. Uh, Reggie's going to take us to the outside, and our offensive line was too strong on that one. So we're going to end up picking up the touchdown, tying the ball game at 7. Now 14-7, to seven, Oregon State is on top, taking the carry up the middle. Something Reggie's getting a lot better at doing these days is taking the ball up the middle, getting yards after contact, something he could never do in his freshman year, but is really improved on now. And then he's going to pick up 7 yards on that carry. So 2nd and 3, ends up getting stopped, and uh, picking up a loss of 2 on that one. But we would continue the drive, so first and 10, and he's going to pick up about 11 or 12 yards on that carry. Going to the outside like he loves to do, using that 99 speed. Here's another uh, stretch play that he's going to get. He's going to go in between his blocks, try to find, try to pick up another block, but could not. But it was still a good gain nonetheless. And now it is 21 to 21, and we completely fooled the defense on this uh, Wildcat play. Our blocks really held strong there, which was nice, because the Wildcat plays don't always work, but, uh, that one definitely worked to perfection. A huge carry, and which ended up, is gonna end up as a touchdown for Reggie Bush, as you can see. Now, 28 to 21, USC on top. 350 left in the third. Picks up two on that second and 10 carry, and now the next play is third and eight. Reggie's gonna take this sweep, try to find space on the right side. Couldn't find it anywhere, Ends up kind of bouncing around for about four yards, but it would not be enough. So next possession now, second and nine. Only going to pick up one yard on that one. Starting to struggle here a little bit. Oregon State's trying to bottle him up. Not letting him get to the outside, but there he's going to pick up eight yards running up the middle. You can see his stats on the day. Uh, 15 carries for 154 yards. It's a 10.2 average. That is pretty insane, even for college. And uh, yeah, so now he's going to try and bounce one back uh, up the middle, and it kind of gets tripped there, and that animation gave him an extra couple yards, so that's a 7-yard carry on that one. Next play's taking the pitch to the right side, and pitches never work in this game, so he loses about uh, 2, I believe, on there. So 2nd and 9 now, 5 minutes left in the 4th quarter. Takes the sweep play, he's going to get bottled up again, this time loses 2 yards. So Reggie's really starting to get bottled up by this Oregon State defense. 
how many times can I say bottle up in this commentary? But anyway, there again, he picks up no yards on the play. 31-28 to now, so Oregon State's trying to put up a fight. We're just trying to run the clock out. Just gets the first down on that play. And I was going to take this pitch, find some space. Can he just juke this one guy? Oh, he would have been off. But he'll take the four-yard carry. Causes Oregon State to call a timeout. And then this run would pretty much wrap up the game. As you can see now, Oregon State has no timeouts. And uh, there's going to be one more carry. This was Reggie's last carry of the day. Almost got a touch on that one. But anyway, this video is going to pretty much wrap up here. So, uh, thumbs up if you enjoyed. And subscribe if you want to see more uh, NCAA Football 13 videos like these. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. And as always, I'm out. Peace.